welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news show. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's what's going on this week. If you haven't already heard, Cavs Cash now enables Cabrini students to dine off campus. Here's Kelly Igo with the story. The Cavs Cash card is really a program that allows the students to purchase uh, food on and off campus through a new debit card system. I think the cap card is good for Cabrini College because it engages the freshmen in activities that their parents are more willing to give them money because they know it will go towards them meeting. Um, because honestly, college students are a large portion of our business. Um, we definitely notice that when it is break time and you guys all go home that our, our business actually declines just a little, a little bit. The purchases can be made at Jasmine's on campus, Sandella's, and Rack Grill, as well as five locations off campus currently. Oh, I love the cab card. Um, I've actually had it since last year, but um, yeah, this year I'm excited that I get to go to SoFun, CVS, Domino's, and Chinese Delight. So it works out well. It's like my Cabrini debit card. The program is only um, been open for two weeks or so now and we've actually had two other businesses uh, in the area actually approach us to try to get into into the program as well on um, that they want to work specifically with uh, Cabrini College. Well I have it now but as a resident I think it would be better if we could use our flex um, at the same locations. I mean, uh, personally I don't think I would want to use the cash card just because I could always have my debit card on me. Um, I think it's pretty awesome. I've um, heard of other colleges having, being able to use their um, cards off campus. Now I think it's pretty cool that we're able to use ours off campus as well. So I think it's a good idea that they did that. Today is actually my second day. Um, it's really fun. I'm excited to see all my friends from Cabrini come in. So it's really good and healthy. So come in, guys. And really it kind of grew out of the fact that uh, students have been asking for it for the last couple of years. And really we need to find out a, a mechanism to pull this off where um, it was efficient for the school and the students, um, where it didn't cost exuberant amounts of money to, to have this programming. And really this year we were able to do it. Earlier this week, a man was reported on Cabrini's campus for indecent exposure, as well as talking to two students inappropriately. The man looked to be between the ages of 20 and 25. He was also described as being clean-shaven and wearing square eyeglasses. The man allegedly approached the two female students near the Dixon Center. The suspect was last seen driving towards Upper Golf Road. If anyone has any information, please contact the Ratner Police Department. In Philadelphia, the auto show is now in full swing. Enjoy a day looking at the newest models of cars from around the world. The auto show takes place at the Pennsylvania Convention Center. Tickets for adults are $12. The show takes place until Sunday, January 27th. Public safety was recently removed from the residence halls on campus, and a new system has been put in place. Here's Nick Cipollone with the exclusive. They didn't get pulled out of the residence halls. The changes that they're going to be doing rounds constantly throughout the buildings. Um, so I think some of the changes that we'll see is the new leadership position of the desk assistant. Currently we have Ari sitting at the desks um, in East, Res East Residence Hall, Woodcrest and Xavier from 8 p.m. until 12 a.m. Sundays through Wednesdays and then Thursday, Friday and Saturday they're sitting from 8 p.m. until 2 a.m. It's going to be a work study position um, in Woodcrest, Xavier and East Res. The hours are from 8, to two, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. seven days a week. We're going to do a training once we hire everybody. Um, and they'll be trained in a smaller fashion than the RAs, but in a similar fashion to um, send people in and out and to recognize um, situations that would occur in the um, entrances of the building, who to contact for help. Um, I think it aids in the campus safety because with public safety doing rounds of the residence halls consistently throughout the night, we have two more officers on the road. Um, in the residence hall area and then we have officers here in the academic area and now if somebody calls for help um, or they need to respond to a situation you're not pulling somebody from the desk um, there's somebody constantly patrolling and their response time will be a little quicker 
um, which is helpful for residents, life staff when we respond to a situation. For Location's weekly news show, I'm Nick Ciplone. Now back to the studio. That was your trip around the block. Now here's your weekly sports update with Kevin. The Cabrini men's and women's basketball teams capped off another successful week of action with a pair of wins on Monday. The Lady Cavs held on for a 70-66 win over Rosemont College to improve to 9-0 in CSAC play. This win follows a pair of victories against Cedar Crest College and Gwen and Mercy College and improved the Lady Cavs to 14-3 on the season. The men's team dominated play in a 93-47 victory over Baptist Bible College. Despite falling in a conference game for just the second time this season on Saturday to Keystone College, the win on Monday keeps the Cavs in a tie atop the CSAC standings. It was a rough week for professional sports in Philadelphia. The Sixers continued their struggles on the hardwood, falling to the San Antonio Spurs and Milwaukee Bucks this week. Despite managing to steal an overtime victory against the Toronto Raptors last Friday, the Sixers continue to slide, sitting in ninth place in the Eastern Conference with a 17-25 record. They look to get back to winning ways on Saturday when they host the New York Knicks. The Flyers open their season with a 3-1 loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins on Saturday in the first of three straight losses to open the season. The Flyers also dropped games against the Buffalo Sabres and New Jersey Devils. They return home on Thursday in search of their first win of the season against the New York Rangers. With just three weeks until spring training begins, the Phillies may have found the final piece of the puzzle that is the 2013 roster. They signed outfielder Delman Young to a one-year $750,000 deal on Tuesday. Young is expected to become the team's starting right fielder. Tune in next week to see how Cabrini and Philadelphia sports teams fared in this week's games. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. Three people were shot and wounded Tuesday afternoon at Lone Star College's North Harris Community College campus in Houston, Texas. The shooting took place near the campus library after an altercation between two students. Two people of interest in the shooting were detained for questioning, including one with a student identification, according to authorities. Tuesday's shooting came as the nation is embroiled in a debate over gun control following the December massacre of 20 elementary school students in Connecticut. Fortunately, the 22-year-old shooter was arrested. The Aurora, Colorado movie theater has reopened where the massacre happened this past July during the midnight showing of the, Bat of the Dark Knight Rises. Although some family members of the 12 dead and many wounded felt skeptical about the reopening, they were joined by many Aurora residents at a night of remembrance several days after Christmas. According to CNN, residents are happy about the reopening so things can get back to normal in a town struck by tragedy. In other news, William Clark of Southwest Philadelphia is in custody on robbery and reckless endangerment charges. Clark was accused of attacking women who were waiting for subway trains and throwing them onto the train tracks. A surveillance camera caught Clark attacking a woman, which led to his arrest only moments after. The last woman he attacked was able to climb off the tracks and immediately went to police. According to police, this incident will bring more security to subway and train stations. That was your trip across the nation. Now here's Christine with your entertainment update. To kick off his second term as President of the United States, President Barack Obama took the oath of office on the steps of the nation's capital. While the focus was clearly on Obama, Kelly Clarkson and Beyonce did their best to steal the show. Beautiful voices rang out in Washington on Monday as Kelly Clarkson sang My Country Tis of Thee and Beyonce performed the national anthem in honor of President Obama's second inauguration. But apparently, rumor has it that Beyonce lip synced her performance with a pre-recorded tape, according to a U.S. Marine Band spokeswoman. In my opinion, there's no way that she would lip sync the performance. Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. The Bachelor season 17 is off to the races, and competition to win Sean Lowe's heart is heating up. In efforts to crank up the romance, Sean takes Leslie M. on a journey to break the Guinness World Record for longest on-screen kiss for over three and a half minutes. The Bachelor airs Monday at 8 p.m. on ABC. That's all I have for entertainment news for this week. Now back to the news desk for your trip around the world. At least 37 hostages died in the terrorist seizure of a natural gas facility in the northwestern African nation of Algeria. 
Five other hostages are missing from the complex and could be dead, according to the Algerian Prime Minister. Three Americans were among 38 workers killed in the siege in which Islamic terrorists used hostages as human shields after their attempted mass kidnapping for ransom went awry. Algerian special forces stormed the plant on Saturday to end the siege. They moved in to prevent what government officials said was a plot by the Islamic terrorists to blow up the complex and kill all their hostages with mines sewn throughout the site. The 2013 inauguration ceremonies to honor the start of President Barack Obama's second term in office included two official inaugural balls, a National Day of Service, and two swearing-in ceremonies on Monday, January 21st. It was also the celebration of Dr. Lu Martin Luther King's birthday. Commemorative events for Martin Luther King Jr. slid seamlessly into celebrations of the swearing-in Monday of the nation's first African-American president, with many Americans moved by the reminder of how far the country has come since the 1960s. Thousands flocked to Washington, D.C., including a few Cabrini students. To help Obama kick off his second round in the White House, notable names like James Taylor, Stevie Wonder, Katy Perry, and Beyonce performed that day. At the ceremonial inauguration, Obama took the oath on a Bible once owned by King. He called it a great privilege. The King Bible was one of two used. The other had belonged to Abraham Lincoln. This week, students from Swaziland visited Cabrini College to interact with students and staff and to experience a week at college. Our own Heather La Pergola sat down with the students from Swaziland to see what the Cabrini Ministry has done for Swaziland and check up on their visit. Children who were not educated and they did not have parents to look after them. Or those who did have, children, who did have parents you might find that some of, uh, some of the parents did not take care of them uh, because they were poverty stricken. So Caprini Ministries made sure that those children are well taken care of. I enjoyed it very, very well to be here. Like uh, I visited a Dr. Pearson classroom where I got a lot of skills of how to teach the children phonics and I also visited Dr. Joe Clegg, where he taught us about classroom management. And uh, I knew some of the skills that I need to pay, I need to practice them in Swaziland, like taking care of the children. Uh, they get also proper education. Mm, I came here to see how the outside world works, especially to see how you Americans, we are different from Swazians, and to gain college experience because I've never been to a college, and to also see what, what a college offers, and also to kind of enlighten my mind as to what college students do and what they don't do. I'm feeling at home. In speaking with our guests from Swaziland, we've had a very eye-opening and inspiring experience. We hope that they enjoy the rest of their visit here at Cabrini, and we are grateful for having them speak with us. This is Heather Labragola on location for location. Thanks for catching up with us this week. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.